Hi, my name is Dylan, and in this video, I'll be covering Chapter 9 of the Barron's AP Economics book. I will be outlining the important stuff you need to know in this chapter for the AP exam, both micro and macro, and explaining each concept in depth. Here's what you need to know for this chapter. You need to know the four types of market structures. Perfect competition, monopolistic competition, oligopolies, and monopolies. Perfect competition is a type of market structure where there are a ton of sellers who sell identical products at the same price. In this market, there are so many sellers that no one seller or group of sellers can change the market price or terms of exchange. They are what's called price takers. They have to sell at the equilibrium price or the intersection of demand and supply. They all sell the same identical product, so all of their products are perfect substitutes for each other. There are no barriers to entry in, for a perfect competition uh, market. Basically, any person can easily create a company and join the market. The demand is perfectly elastic for the firm. They have to sell at the market price, and or otherwise they will lose money. These firms all make zero economic profit or normal profit because they all sell their goods at the same price as the average total cost, at the minimum average total cost. This leads to high efficiency because all goods are being produced at the minimum cost. An example of perfect competition is farming. A farmer has to sell his, his or her apples at the same price as everyone else because his or her apples are no different than anyone else's. If he sells his apples at a lower price, there's no point because he can sell the same amount at the higher market price. If he or she sells his apples at a higher price, he or she won't sell any apples because everyone will just buy apples from any other farmer. In perfect competition, the seller can sell as much as he wants at the market rate. The next type of market structure is called a monopolistic competition. In monopolistic competition, there's a, um, there's a lot of medium-sized firms who need to innovate and differentiate themselves. It's a market setting for most firms in the United States. They use pricing strategies or they create new products in order to take away sales from the rivals. The firm's demand curve is not perfectly elastic because of this, as the products are no longer perfect substitutes. That means that changes in prices can significantly impact revenue. And also, because the goods are not identical, there will be people who choose to buy products from other firms, and therefore the firm cannot sell as much as they can produce. These firms will tend to have zero economic profits, but they will sell their products at a price higher than the mineral minimum average total cost. Therefore, it's not as efficient as perfect competition. An example of mon monopolistic competition is the clothing industry, an industry with a lot of firms who try their best to make their products as different as possible. The third type of market structure is called an oligopoly. Oligopolies are characterized by a few sellers who act interdependently and or collusively to control the market and the terms of exchange. These sellers are all large and powerful, and because of this, there are strong barriers to entry. It's very difficult for a firm to enter an oligopoly. These firms can either sell the same products or different ones, but either way there are, there are few substitutes, and therefore demand for these products becomes relatively inelastic. A firm in an oligopoly has some price making power because of its size and power, so it will often have economic profits. An example of an oligopoly is Airbus and Boeing in the airline markets. They are both huge companies who control the entire market. The last type of market structure is called a monopoly. Monopolies are basically the opposite of perfect competition. There's only one company or firm that basically controls the entire market. They are the only or the main seller of a product, therefore there aren't any real substitutes. The demand is inelastic because they have so much power that buyers can really only buy from them. However, it's not per perfectly inelastic because buyers will still feel influenced by price changes. Monopolies use pricing strategies to maximize revenues and products. Monopolies also have the highest barriers to entry. They will almost always have economic profits because monopolies will limit output and increase prices to maximize profits. An example of a monopoly is AT&T before it wasn't broken up, as they controlled the entire tel U.S. telecom industry. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something from this video.